All right, welcome to our goal setting and priority workshop. If you guys have any friends that are typically on the coffee chat, go tag them, message them. I think that this is gonna be fun and interesting, at least to me it is. I was kind of thinking about how I wanted to go about this because I feel like over the years I've taken different trainings and different, you know, business mentorships that I've done and I've kind of combined them all together to really nail down what I think in this business. And I, I feel like I have an idea of what our team's vibe is. And so sometimes goal setting and priority setting can be really boring and dry and unsexy. But Brendan Burchard and a couple authors and books that I've read have made it really fun for me. And I know Haley Garrett has really adopted this. Um, if you have more than three priorities in your life, you don't have any priorities at all. And for, you know, someone that's working at home with a little one, I obviously can relate. And even if you're not, life is crazy, right? If you're working full time and trying to grow your coaching business, um, it can be a lot. And it has helped me so much to learn some mental cues and some mental habits as well as tactical habits to manage my time and my priorities. And the biggest thing I've had to learn is that having three priorities is the key. And in, I'm doing a little mini test run with my, I have like four brand new coaches. And it's been a while since I've done a new coach training. So I was just kind of, I made a bod group and I'm just testing out some new coach training. Nothing, nothing big. And I asked, you know, what are your top three priorities in life in there? And I actually have a couple seasoned coaches in there too. And it was so interesting to see what people think their priorities are. And I think that if we aren't even clear on what our top three priorities in life are right now, and we don't have that in our head every single day from the moment you get up, these are the three most important areas of my life. Cause we can't do 10 things right now, right? Chrissy, you're the best example. You kind of crossed out all the extra things that were kind of making your life so busy to the point that you weren't able to focus on yourself. And I just want to remind you guys, cutting things out of your life is always temporary. Once you get on a better path, once you start ticking off some goals, once you really master the habits of taking care of yourself and your coaching business, oh, people in the waiting room, I'll have to keep watching that. Um, you can always add those things back in. So if you guys are like me, sometimes I'm an all or nothing person. And when I'm setting priorities, sometimes it kills me to not have, you know, like an extracurricular, like, oh, I mean, this is before COVID, but I loved going to yoga class one to two days a week. I loved getting out of the house when I first became a mom and there was this little tiny studio and I would go to it, but it was causing a lot of havoc in my life with my schedule, figuring out who was going to watch Nixon. And so for the time being, it killed me to cut that yoga class out, even though COVID <laughs> naturally cut it out. But I knew that if I worked hard and just stayed laser focused, it would pay off so that I could go to even more yoga classes later down the line. So as I'm going through things today, um, I was really trying to think like, how do I train goal setting without telling people what I think their goals should be? Because obviously it's not up to me, but the, the main reason that the main thing I want to teach you guys is having a a really big lens that you're viewing your life through. So um, one of my coaches wrote, like her top three priorities right now are, now are to feel like present, to do my workout, and to feel calm. And I think that's great, that's super awesome. But if we're thinking about the wide lens, where do I wanna end up with my life? Where do I wanna be in six months? Where do I wanna be at the end of September? I feel like they're not specific enough in terms of picking areas of life that you really want to master. So I'll tell you guys kind of what I have found works for me, just to give you guys some an, an idea. And where I actually created a goal setting worksheet for you guys that will go along with setting your three priorities. And then it's going to help you break it down so that you have no question where you should be spending your time. Ugh, this waiting room thing is killing me. Sorry. Can you guys hold on one second? My dog is scratching the glass door and her nails are literally killing me right now. Hold on. Oh, 
Oh my God, that was terrible. I was trying to ignore it. Just like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, COVID naturally, unfortunately, <laughs> cut out a lot of things for sure. But I feel like women in general, we want to be in control. We're type A people. We want to get shit done. We're like, you know, masters of the household sometimes. Sometimes it's the guy's role it, or it doesn't matter. But typically speaking, women, we want to get shit done. Like we don't want clutter. We don't necessarily want to feel rushed and overwhelmed. And so then when I talk to people about their goals and their priorities, and I'm like, let's talk about your schedule. And I see their schedule and I'm like, do you know how much unnecessary stuff is in there? And so um, I started working with my sleep expert that helped me sleep train my kid. And we've been doing a Mastering Your Morning Routine course together. I've learned a ton from her and kind of stretched my like, knowledge a little bit. And I started diving back into mastering routines and habits. And I'm just so excited to teach you guys like the little extras that I feel like can make your life feel a lot less crazy and busy, but I have to be honest with you. There's going to be things that you have to cut out in your self-discipline. You're going to have to really summon that raw self-discipline. And that's where a lot of people get stuck because when you change your schedule, when you change your routines, your brain is hardwired to do X, Y, Z. And so you're going to have to remember like that little mental flag that goes up. Oh, this is hard. I'm overwhelmed. And then we just go back to our three priorities. So um, a couple resources and books for you guys. Um, I was going to do a book club for the end of the year, but I just, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. And we're focusing on this new coach training that's coming out for October. So um, I can recommend the books. You guys can read them if you want. The 12 week, 12, why can't I say that? 12 week year is an amazing end of year book. It basically, in nine, there's 90 days left in the year. How appropriate, right? Um, and it teaches you how to plan and strategize and prioritize, but it also teaches you how to see more progress and more success in a shorter period of time. You don't need a full year. And I feel like in these 90 day challenges, that's why a lot of um, public speakers do 90 day challenges. I think Rachel Hollis says them because when you realize how much shit you can get done when you prioritize in 90 days, then you see a year, it feels like a decade. It's so much longer. Um, the other book that I really have been liking and where I got this idea from is You Can Have It All, just not at the same damn time. <laughs> if you're a mom, if you're a family member, I feel like this book is so helpful. Also, in case you didn't know, this author is a top, top, top seller in network marketing for Rodan and Fields. Um, she doesn't say Rodan and Fields in here. She talks about skincare. Um, but she wrote Get Over Your Damn Self, which is a great beginner network marketing book. So this was on the shelf at the library. I just picked it up and um, I'm almost done. I'm on like the last couple chapters. I was like, perfect timing. So I do have a little presentation just to kind of walk you guys through. And uh, I, I want to kind of remove my filter today for you guys and just really be honest with you and how I prioritize and set goals and how I mentor and how I've been able to grow this business. Because even if you take a piece of what I've learned and what I teach, I feel like it can help you guys a lot. So let me share my screen. Okay. So this doesn't have to just be about setting priorities and goals for the end of the year, but I do feel like it's just perfect timing. And I, I was saying earlier, you know, you might have to cut out some things in your life right now that aren't necessarily a priority. Maybe it's an extra because it's taking up time or it's a distraction, um, but you can always add them back in. Also, um, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I talk about seasons of life. So when I had Nixon, the first year and a half was just one of the most difficult seasons I had ever been through. It's common for a lot of new moms. Some moms have like these awesome, cute little like squishy babies and some people have crazy Nixons like I did. <laughs> and so that season of my life, I was in pure survival mode. There might be things in your life, whether it's a kid or not, or maybe there's something really difficult that you're going through, lost a loved one, whatever your difficult is, recognize that it's a hard season and maybe right now you might not be able to absolutely crush your goal setting and your priorities and be crystal clear on that, but 
there comes a time when you're going to wake up one day and life feels a little bit easier because maybe that difficult season is passing or changing. I want you to be able to recognize when you're coming out of a hard season, when you're like, okay, I'm ready to get serious. That's when you go back to the goal setting. That's when you go back to your priorities and it's not always perfect. So, you know, maybe like when you have a new baby, you're not really sleeping that well. For me now, now I can prioritize. Sleep is literally like one of the most important things for me and my wellness journey. And so a year and a half ago, if I was to set my priority to be sleep eight to nine hours a night, that wasn't realistic. And so that's a good reminder that you can have it all, just not at the same damn time. So sometimes temporarily you might not have what you want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't add it later. So in this book, You Can Have It All, she starts off about talking about how she grew her business to seven figures. She's, you know, doing all the things she was on. I don't know what all the things are called, like, but when moms go to the school and they're like on like the parent teacher advisory board, whatever that's called, she was doing all the things at her kid's school. She was like baking for the kid's school. And then all her kids had all these practices and she's like, I was doing it all. I was, she's married, she was crushing her business, but she wasn't sleeping, she wasn't taking care of herself, and so what happens? Burnout, you get sick, you end up hating your work, you're miserable, you're bitchy at home, you and your partner aren't doing well, like it's just not good. Even though they achieved all their goals, other things fell to the wayside. And so she decided, she's like, obviously I cannot continue with this. And that's the big thing with Brendan Burchard is high performance has to be sustained. So what you're doing right now, if you continue on this path in your personal habits, for your health, in your workouts, with your family, with your relationships, with your self-love, with your sleep habits, like all the things that make up a great life, or not. <laughs> um, if you continue on this path, are you going to be able to sustain it long term? And can you level up at this pace? And there's been multiple times that I've had to check myself and realize that no, I wouldn't be able to sustain it. And so um, Romy is her name, Ooh, the author of this book. So Romy said, I need to like, just go away for a weekend, spend some time with myself and figure out what I'm going to do. Because clearly everything, I'm doing everything for everyone right now and it's not working. So she decided to pick a word. What is my word of the year going to be? So rather than make this like a 12 month priority and goal setting, let's make this an end, you know, last three months, last quarter of the year. It's game time. What do you desire and want your word to be? So if you're, you know, I do have a little sheet I'll give you guys in the team page after, um, but what's your word? What do you want to feel? What do you want to be? Call me. Um, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I think Britt Morgan is in the waiting room. I don't know if there's any, anybody else. She just texted me and I was like, oh shit, we have a waiting room situation. No, oh, thank you. I didn't have the chat open. Sorry if I. No, you're good. Thanks. Um, I only see a Wesley. I don't see her in there. But yeah, that's her. That's her. That's her. That's her. That's her. That's her boyfriend. Sorry. Gotcha. No worries. Thanks for telling me. Thanks. Yeah, let me keep this chat open too. Okay. So Victoria was saying she's definitely in a season, life and business season. My son is crazy too. And so I think the most important thing is to identify, even in a crazy season, this will be so helpful. If you guys can do it in a crazy season, imagine how quote unquote easy or simple it's going to feel in a slightly easier season of life. So picking your word is going to be key because then your priorities and then your goals have to align with your word. So spend some time just for a second, just kind of thinking about, oh, if I could just feel or do or be X. Um, you know, some words could be like balance, peaceful, uh, strong, just, you know, words that are big and powerful, that would mean everything to you. Then from there, what you do, so I'll give you guys this worksheet, but your word is, okay? So I am going to just pick the word balance. And everything that you do from here on going forward, if your word is balance or whatever it is, 
has to surround the idea of being balanced. So then what you do is you pick your top three priorities. For me, my priorities are my wellness and my vibrancy and my energy. And the cool thing about my wellness, my vibrancy, my energy, I feel like I can't just pick one word, like I guess my well-being, is that if I type in my well-being as my priority, I'm very illustrative, I feel like I have to walk you guys through it, then, every, then these are your goals here, these little dots. So every single goal that I have under this first priority is about my well-being. So for me, in order to be my best self, you guys all know what it takes to be your best self. The most important thing for me is a meal plan, I don't prep, and food shopping. Those go together, okay? For me, my well-being, because if I don't have this done, I eat poorly, very poorly. For my well-being, non-negotiable, bed by 10 p.m. And then I could put in my workouts and meditate, okay? And you can break them down even more if you want. If you want to say, okay, I have to meal plan five meals a week, you can get really specific. And so my second priority for me, most important thing in my life right now, other than my well-being, is my family experience. And I obviously don't need to like keep breaking it down for you guys because I think you understand what I'm doing here. But the last priority for me is my business. And this is where I want to talk to you guys. <laughs> Some of you are here to have fun and you're loving it and you want to be successful, but you're not owning the idea that I must grow this business and change people's lives. It takes a certain mentality and it takes a certain type of ownership to really accept that this is a business where you have to go out there and go after it. So when I ask people, what's your priorities, you know, and we're in a coaching mentoring conversation, if, whoa, that's not what I meant to do, <laughs> too big. If coaching in some way, shape, shape or form or earning an extra income or whatever makes you feel better, I do feel like in some way, shape or form, your business has to be in your priorities. And if not, that's fine. You can put it as number four, but then we all know that we're not gonna get the results that we want. And so you don't have to set your goals like me. I want you guys to set your, sorry, I should say priorities. I want you to set your priorities as what is going to make you feel good about life, feel fulfilled, feel excited, and help you move forward in your life. And this is over the next three months. What's the most important thing that you focus on? Now, let me go back to this here. So then after you decide what your priorities are, then you decide what your goals are. And you're only gonna have three goals under each priority, no more. And I, I'll give you guys some tips. I think that you need to have some personal goals, obviously. Because sometimes also, something that happens in the coaching world whenever we're setting goals, is they put goals down that look good. As if like we're in fifth grade still and the teacher's gonna grade us on our answer. No, I want you guys to put the answers down that you truly want. Do you want to earn $50 a week? Own it, step up, claim it. Do you want to lose 10 pounds, fit into the little black dress, lose the baby weight, gain muscle, gain a booty? Like what? is something that makes you so fired up and so excited. What do you want to change or accomplish? For me, my, in my postpartum season, like just feeling strong in like myself again, because my postpartum journey was just so rotten to me, I wanted to feel strong and feel good in my clothes again. And so a year and a half ago, that would have been one of my personal goals because my well-being is so important to me. Like if I'm tired or hungover or feel like shit, I just can't do anything. And so what do you want to change or accomplish? For you, it might be getting up early in the morning. For you, it might be having a healthy pregnancy. For you, it might be journaling, it might be working on your relationship, getting out on date night more often. But then I have to make sure that you guys also set some, if you have business as a top priority in some way, shape or form, make sure that you guys also have some rank and income goals. So if you're setting business as a, 
priority for yourself, I think that you need to know what the next step is for you. So let's say you're emerald right now or not emerald yet. I think you should set the goal for what you want to rank advance to next, but also what's a weekly income goal? What's a monthly income goal? If you guys don't know a target of what you're shooting for, it's going to be really difficult to move forward in this business, right? And you have to remember why you're doing this. If you're here to just um, like be a part of the team and feel awesome and show up and work out and just like be a part of the community, that's amazing. But if you in the back of your head are not owning up to the fact that you do want to see sex success with this business, if you're not honestly claiming like, yeah, sure, I'd love to be able to like earn enough to pay for my kids daycare. Like I hear it all the time. Oh yeah, no, I'd love to be able to do coaching full time, but I have my full time job. Do you see how like back and forth that sounds? So claim what you want and you should know what your next business goal is. If you don't, you all have an upline and you all have a star diamond upline. I think that you have to get crystal clear on why you're doing this, what's the next step, and what do you wanna earn? Because guess what? Once you actually achieve that, you're starting to show yourself what's actually possible. And then you really start to see, wow, okay, I got from here to here. That means I can go from here to the next step. So I think in the world of coaching, personal goals are super important. I do believe that you need to have a business goal. And I think that you should also, this is my personal opinion, make an impact goal. Because I know some people really struggle with setting an income goal because then they immediately, immediately associate that with, oh, now I have to go sell three challenge packs or now I have to sign up five people. And so I think that be aware of your perspective about setting goals and earning money and what that looks like. Because for me, it's backwards. When I make a difference and I help someone get healthy, then I earn an income. I flip it. So my in impact goal comes first and it happens to be attached to my business goals. It's important for me. It is a necessity. I wake up every single day wanting to inspire someone to take action and to go feel their best. Cause I know what it's like to feel my best. I also know what it's like to feel my worst. And I literally am up at night thinking about people who don't feel well or excited or vibrant to go after their best life. And so what difference do you want to make at what level of scale? Would you feel so good about yourself and your coaching business and you making a difference if you helped five people a month? For me, it wouldn't be enough necessarily. Like my goal would be more like 10, 15, 20, but my goals don't have to be yours. What number would feel good. What difference do you want to make? And I think it's important to also identify at what level of scale. So I'm trying to scroll. It's not scrolling. Here we go. Colleen. Yes. Um, in the chat, it says Brit is in the waiting room. Why isn't it not? Sorry. Thank you. You're the best. Like normally my chat blinks, but it's not blinking at me. What is happening? Tell me again if any if I'm missing anyone. Sorry, maybe someone messaged me. Okay, so the other thing, um, whenever you're setting goals, if you're setting any business goals, um, I find with a lot of new coaches that sometimes they are like, oh yeah, no, sure, I'd love to like help some people and inspire them. Like, yeah, sure. But what's, do you guys know what the word necessity means? Like, do you have to do it or you kind of sort of want to do it? So for me, the level of necessity to be successful in this business is high because this has changed my life. This is what I want to do. I, I claim and own being successful at this, but I also know that this is what provides for my family. So what's your level of necessity to get other people results? Sometimes I'll notice when we're setting goals for coaches that their only goal is for themselves. And it's not about, which it's also a vital behavior. Get people results is vital behavior number three or four. I don't remember what order it's in, but what's that level of necessity that you're owning to get other people results? For me, every single day, my goal is to have a conversation with someone that's interested or wanting to sign up. So that means I have a lot of conversations with people to make sure that I am making a difference. And then also not just only getting people results, but what's your level of necessity to advance in your business? Is it important to you? This is a really important question. Is it important to you for you to advance in your business? Is it important to you to see your paycheck growing and for you to see your team growing? 
Is it important for you to see your challenge group going? If that's not important to you, it's gonna be really difficult to set some goals. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about time management and then we'll go back to, we'll have a little goal setting workshop session. I'll play some music and you guys can kind of sit there and spend some time asking yourself, like, what are my top three priorities right now in my life for these next 90 days? For me, to be honest, it's always going to kind of be the same. And sometimes my wellness, like tomorrow I start with a new doctor dealing with the last little bit of post concussive symptoms that I have. Like right now to do this, this chat with you guys, I have to use every single bit of brain power <laughs> to get these words out. Like they're in there, but sometimes it's hard for me to pull them out. And so right now I'm about to change my diet and she's going to put me on new supplements. She's a functional medicine doctor. So you know, for the next three months plus, the number one priority for me will be focusing on getting myself back to 100% after that dang concussion. But when it comes down to like, so once you set your priorities and goals, then we have to look at your schedule. And if we don't have a schedule, like if you don't have an idea of what your day looks like or what your week looks like, no wonder why you're feeling overwhelmed. If you don't have a planner, if you don't, I, I just think pen to paper, there's something that happens with the brain when you're physically writing it. And I use an iPad Pro for my planner right now because I write it in and I just, I take it everywhere with me. So whatever, I feel like pen to paper works. Um, if you use your phone and it works for you, awesome. But if it's not working for you, may I suggest a hard written planner. Um, so this is what Brendan Burchard teaches me is oh, checking the waiting room. Of course I check now, no one's in there. 60% of your time needs to be spent on your three priorities. So for me, 60% of my day is spent on my well-being, my family experience between my relationship and getting on the floor and playing with Nixon and making sure that like two and a half for me is just like this age where I feel like I'm responsible for so much for Nixon. So it's a big priority for me to be very involved with him right now. Um, and then the third one is my business. So 60% of my time, that's the first thing I schedule into my day. The other 40% of my day is spent doing whatever else I want. So sorry, I was just making sure I was in Nixon's daycare. Um, so if you have dishes, or laundry, or toys, or whatever extracurriculars that are not a part of your, you know, top three priorities, that 60%, you have to do the 60% first, then you do the 40%. And I started rewarding myself. Once you get your work done, Colleen, then you can go do the dishes. That's not really rewarding myself, but dishes drive me insane. And so I think most times people say, I'll do the dishes first, and then I'll do my business. And it's like, the dishes really honestly can freaking wait and it has made me so much more self-discipline and laser focused to do what I need to do because I have three priorities. So let's kind of scroll back and um, take a minute and figure out what your word is. For the next 90 days, for those that came in late, sorry, I had you in the waiting room. Um, for the next 90 days, what word, what feeling, how do you, what do you want to accomplish in the next 90 days? And then you have three priorities. And I love this thing, focus on, focus on less so you can live more and be more. So then tonight, you can spend some more time figuring out what your goals wanna be, goals wanna be, will be. And then tomorrow when you get up, if you guys don't have like a morning routine or something that you do first, to really kickstart this 60% of my time is spent doing what I need to do. It's going to be weird and difficult for you. And you're want to, you're going to want to go back to the hot mess, chaotic craziness. And don't get me wrong guys. There's moments like Tuesdays and Wednesdays are nuts for me. They're my busiest days, but I get so much done and I'm so productive that Thursdays and Fridays, I'm kind of like, what do I do with all this time? <laughs> so I still bring it back to my priorities. Um, okay. If I can find my Spotify, I'll stop. Do you guys want me to load that in the team page right now? Or can, do you guys want me to just, I can't see you guys. So type it in the box if you guys want me to load this to the team page right now. Otherwise you can just use a piece of paper, but this is such a good challenge. 
because our busy chaotic brains are so typical of wanting to just oh yeah no 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 i have priorities i have goals i have a schedule so then once you get your priorities priorities and goals then you go to your schedule and you're like 60 percent of my time should be all right let me download stop sharing i'm like obsessed with schedule setting and obsessed with teaching people how to like break it down into their day. And most times I realize that they're just not utilizing their time right because the dishes pull them away or they're not utilizing the morning before the kids get up or they're not utilizing nap time. Okay, P. I didn't wanna like spoil the surprise, otherwise I would have put this up there for you guys before. I'm just erasing my words because you don't need mine in there and simultaneously trying to put music on. Good me talking in my sleep, tossing in these sheets. I'm gonna put it in the TV right now. Can't breathe. Every time you leave, you steal a part of me. I never admit to myself I've been thinking about you. Truth is, I don't want to wake up alone here without you. There are some things that we said that we never can undo. Oh, I tried to. Still, I tried to. You, I can tell. You don't love me like you used to. You don't love me like you used to. And I can't forget how I felt when you love me like you used to. You don't love me like you used to. sugar addiction from pregnancy and then so then what you do for um if that's one of your priorities for like the wellness and then you break it down to think about what do I need to do to make sure that I don't have sugar around me so it's probably like don't buy sugar at the, at the grocery store or you know find an alternative for my sweets because we don't want to just take everything away right we want to make sure that we also um, bring some joy in there too Thank you. 
If anyone like has questions as you're doing this, like I'm not really sure how to like set this goal, this priority, you guys can totally type in the chat box. I'm happy to help. All right, so 
I think we all have an idea. The other thing that I love about setting priorities in our life is that this really helps you own the things that bring you joy too. Because sometimes we feel like our priority should be, should be, quote unquote, she talks a lot about shoulds. Like for me, I used to feel like, oh, like my house isn't clean, it should be a priority, or like clean as in like tidy, you know, it's kind of a mess. And at the end of the day, it's not a priority to me. I felt like for me, <laughs> I felt like that was a huge should. And when I finally realized that that's not in my top 60%, I was able to feel so much more productive and relieved that, oh, I can leave that for the 40% later. Um, one of the things that really stood out to me in Brendan's book too, when he's talking about focusing on the 60% is how a lot of people say like how busy they are. And I'm not saying we're not busy, but there's a lot of extra busyness that a lot of us focus on without us even realizing and he said, not one thing, this is something he said to himself, not one thing I've done today is going to advance my career or be remembered by me or anyone else 10 years from now. Um, he's like, I spent all day working, but I had nothing really to show for it. And I felt like that before too. And that's really one of the reasons I love Brendan's planner is because he's not just here to make you work and grind. His number one priority is actually to help you find balance because he talks about all areas of life. So the whole first part of this is a whole life assessment. And then he um, does a high performance habits assessment too. So he asks you like on a scale of one to 10, how's your health, your mental, mental emotional state, your partner, your love, family, friends, mission, experiences, spirit, finances, and learning. And so every day, when I'm planning based on my priorities and my goals, I'm checking in with all my areas of life based on his reflection questions. Um, and then his high performance habits are, are you seeking clarity? That's kind of what I really want you guys to, to get out of this is this entire journey is all self-discovery, right? Learning about what you want, learning about what brings you joy, what doesn't bring you joy. And it changes all the time. What brought me joy 10 years ago or five years ago is very different than what it is now. So seeking clarity is something that he's taught me and every day that's a part of what he does. Um, generating energy. I am really good at generating energy because I've studied so much from him. And once I started applying it to my life and my business, I realized like, oh, okay, I get it now. And so like waiting for motivation or waiting for someone to tell you to do something, I feel like Brendan really just nails that category. And he also reminds me that I have to manage my energy. So he asked that I schedule in pit stops. He makes sure that, you know, in my top 60% that I'm taking care of myself because he's not about burning the candles at both ends. Uh, raising necessity today. I'll tell you like what he talks about for necessity because sometimes people don't understand necessity and I think it really helps. So I was emotionally committed to excellence today. Are you emotionally, imagine every single morning if you asked yourself that, am I emotionally committed to excellence today on a scale of one to five? I knew my why today and I worked for it. I cared about serving others today. It's so perfect for coaching. I hit my deadlines and finished my duties today, and I managed my self-talk to stay on my A-game. And I think that that's an important one too. And then of course he talks about increasing productivity, developing influence. This is a really good one if you guys are struggling with attraction marketing. Um, developing influence, I was a role model today. Such a good one. I'll go back into my stories and I'll be like, was I a role model today? Um, I guided others to thinking well today. Such a beautiful thing that we can share our PD. I challenged someone to grow today. That's a good one. I'll tell you guys a quick little story. I messaged one of my newbie coaches who has so much freaking potential that I just want to shake it out of her, but I can't, right? And so I was like, hey, I just want to check in and see if I can help you with your social media posts because I'm seeing her bleed blue, but she's like afraid to share her story. And after some digging, I was able to uncover that she's afraid of being pushy because she had seen another coach be really pushy with her in the past. And I just had to remind her, I said, was I pushy with you? Like what's everything I share, does it feel pushy to you? And she's like, no, you're right. And so this question, I challenged someone to grow today is such a good focal point because 
it, it reminds me to go into, you know, the new coaches or my existing coaches and try to figure out how I can challenge someone to grow today. But I also have to be talking the talk and walking the walk and challenging myself too. So, um, demonstrating courage is the last high performance habit. So I dealt with fear or unknowns well today. That's a tricky one, right? There's a lot of unknowns and fears that come our way. And for the most part, I feel like coaching has helped me figure out how to respond to life rather than react to life. Um, I shared my real self with others today. Like, I don't know if this is boring to you guys to just sit here and read this, but it's just so helpful for me to make sure that I'm focusing on what brings me joy and what's also going to help my life progress. So um, I don't know if you guys want to share. What are your top three priorities? You guys can type them in the box if you want. I was like, oh crap, was I not recording? <laughs> I was. So for me, it's well-being. Whoops, didn't mean to send that. My family experience. So every day I'm scheduling in adventures. And I think it's so fun too, like setting. Oh, Chrissy, I like it. Grow my business. So invite daily, better time management. Continue to find my brand. So for number one, one B, Chrissy, identify exactly what better time management is. I know obviously you just typed it in here, but just in case if you go back to, you know, dive into this a little bit deeper. So what is better time management? I will turn off like no phone, no distractions and I'll spend one hour doing my vitals. Or, you know, I will get up 30 minutes before the kid. Like, be very specific with what the block is for your time management, and then own what you will do. Because it's very easy to say better time management, and if you're gonna print this out, right, then we wouldn't even know. I should be able to know exactly what Chrissy is doing. Um, oh, sorry, moved up. Continue to find my brand. So then I would say, like, identify what you do know about your brand and then commit to sharing those pieces of your brand, you know? Um, and also don't forget, if you're, setting a, if you're setting business as a priority, I think that you need to set what your next goal is for rank and what your weekly income is. Um, invite daily, I think is awesome. But I do, I, I would replace C with, um, what your next ranking goal income is because I just feel like you need a target for the business, you know, continuing to find your brand should totally be part of it. But I feel like having the target to shoot for specifically for what's next in your business, because then it holds you accountable for the next 90 days. My goal and my target in my business is this. Okay. That was a rant, but <laughs> get solid results, prep and plan my food enjoy treat meals. So then say like every Sunday evening, I'm going to enjoy a treat meal. Be specific with that. And then time nutrition, family growth, Kaylee's homework, playtime with Kaylee, decluttering my home and time. Love it. Now, this is literally like perfect for thinking about 60% of your life, your week. Like I manage my life in weeks. It feels like, <laughs> like I know where my week is busy, where it's not as busy and I just plug in what I need to. So 60% of your entire week is spent doing these things. Everything else, we kind of just have to let it go because it's going to go in the 40%. Janelle said, my well-being, love it, my biz, healing and cultivating connections. I don't know if this is well-being, but it feels like my own category because it's deep work. Yeah. I, I totally feel like relationships and connections in general, because well-being is for self and then like creating and cultivating with other people. I agree. Love it. And just get specific. I know you guys are just throwing it in the chat, but just for yourself, make sure that your business goals are specific. And the beautiful thing is once January comes, then you get to do this quarterly planning again. Uh, something else I think I want to try with you guys for the new year is Brendan Burchard does what's called a battle board. And he's like, when I work with high performers or people who are, you know, talking the talk that they want to do all this X, Y, Z in their life, he's like, let me see your battle board. And they're like, what? And he's like, let me see what you have going on. And then we break it down. Like, okay, is this on your calendar? Like, if this is what you want to achieve, is a part of this scheduled into your calendar? So, cookie, I love calling it cookie. Family, 
screen free time, meditation, nature walks. And those are the things that bring us so much joy, right? Like getting out with the family, connection to others, time with friends, reaching out and talking to new people every day. Awesome. So you have to make sure too, um, Cookie, if you, I don't know, I, I, there were some people that were in the waiting room. If the business has any level of importance to you in these next 90 days in terms of advancing in your business, growing your business and getting people started, just make sure that your business is part of your goals because 60% of our time is gonna be spent on these three priorities. If the business is important to you, then it would be in the 60%. And if it's kind of like, it's cool if it happens, but it doesn't really matter, it will go in the 40%. And again, I'm not deciding that for you. Just a reminder that if you want something to happen with the business, I do believe that the business part has to be scheduled in, in the top 60%. So sometimes your goals may be a very specific long paragraph. So I kind of have like this photographic brain where I know my top three priorities and I know my three goals under each priority and that's all I focus on because I've been very specific with it. But generally speaking, if I write, you know, meal plan and um, grocery shopping, if you feel like you need to be specific so that you're not getting lost in you know, time management, you can get specific for yourself. If you need to write it out cool, I know what the meal plan means to me. I know what my grocery shopping looks like to me, but it doesn't hurt to necessarily journal it out and write it out. I just don't necessarily think it all needs to go on that one sheet because then you can just look at it and be like, what do I have to do today? You look at that sheet and those are the three priorities and the goals that matter for these next 90 days. Haley said, my wellness, committing to 80 day obsession and crushing it. Love it. Daily meditation and manifesting every morning. Lung strengthening. Awesome. Family time, no phone. I almost read that no phone, no beta time, but that meant no phone, beta time. Uh, scheduled work hours in planner. More outside adventures, one weekly at least. Yes. Make sure you guys schedule some joy in too. I've made the mistake in my past years of scheduling in all work. All work, no play. <laughs> and you definitely burn out that way. Um, and then business, share 80 day journey authentically, build, elevate your roots culture, get James a diamond and her a two star. So then if you guys are crazy like me, once you have your priorities and your goals, like this, this is easy stuff for me only because I'm very clear on what I want. For some people, they're still figuring out what's important to them in this season of life because it's always changing ebbs and flows. And so I feel like um, you can even break it down. So then for example, to like go next level with the goal setting, what does build the elevate your roots culture look like? So then you can put two bullet points under what that looks like. So then you're getting even more specific that you're almost making a schedule for yourself. So it would be like I'm making something up. For example, go live three times a week and elevate your roots team page. You know what I mean? Or whatever is going to build that culture because it's very easy to say, I'm going to build my elevate your roots culture and not know what that means. So I feel like as long as you know what that means and what that looks like, and you can help yourself put that on the calendar, it just, the, the clarity literally helps me sleep better at night and it, it helps me end the year strong. And I know what my goals are. And when you're focusing time, on these priorities and goals, you're gonna start to see progress and happiness and fulfillment come out of it. And that's when I see coaches really take off because they're feeling good about the work they're putting in. And that's really where that attraction marketing comes in. People are like, what's, what's this girl doing? She's definitely, like you can just see people on social media, you know when they're elevating, right? You know when they're moving up and progressing because they're sinking their teeth into what lights them up. So, uh, I could talk about this for hours, but uh, if you guys ever have questions about this, I will geek out on it any time. Um, so just promise me that if the business is a priority, it's gonna be in your top 60% somewhere. I literally don't care if you set the goal of I wanna earn $100,000 or I wanna earn $50 a week or $25 a week. I just want you to get clear on what you want because if we can help you guys achieve your goals, you're gonna to start to realize, oh, I'm achieving my goals. It's possible for me, it's possible for other people. Yes, it is a hard, painful, and most amazingly rewarding journey to elevate your life. But it's like my obsession, and that's why I just love teaching it to you guys. So um, 
I hope this was fun and helpful. And um, I think next week too, I was going to share a little bit more on some Brendan Burchard stuff for like, we won't do a full battle board yet, but just, um, I've been doing a lot of training with him and he's really updated a lot of his stuff. I feel like with everything that's happening virtually and just like, you know, the landscape of the world right now, it's just so different. So I just want to keep sharing everything I'm learning. All right, ladies, go crush your priorities and your goals. And remember, 60% is spent doing the priorities. The other 40%, you get to do whatever you want. All right, see you guys later. Bye.